Good evening, welcome to ITV News. This is Monday night's calendar. And here are tonight's main stories. The Honourable Gentleman will resume his seat immediately. Immediately! The last from Dewsbury who broke 700 years of tradition. Tributes are paid to Betty Boothroyd, the first female Speaker of the Commons, who's died aged 93. During my childhood, she was always on the television, taking those men to task in the House of Commons, and, and always with such great humour and warmth. She was a speaker that we were all in awe of, uh, quite rightly. A strong Yorkshire woman who came to the House, achieved every goal that she wanted to. A row of shops and homes are badly damaged in Bradford after a major crash involving two police cars. Experts have spent the day making the buildings behind me safe. Luckily, nobody was badly hurt. I'll have more on exactly what happened here shortly. We want rent! We want rent! We want rent! Police are called to this secondary school in Leeds, where pupils and parents have been protesting about access to toilets. But we start tonight with the tributes which have been flooding in today following the death of the Yorkshire woman who became the first female to be the Speaker of the House of Commons. Betty Boothroyd, now Lady Boothroyd, was 93 and was born in Dewsbury. She entered politics because she said she wanted a better life for families like hers. But it was as the Speaker that she became a familiar face and voice who paved the way for many more women to enter the House of Commons. Our political correspondent Katie Oscroft is in Westminster tonight. Katie, good evening. How's the news been received there today? Well, Ian, the parliamentary day here began with a minute's silence, but after that, all anyone wanted to do was to talk about Betty Boothroyd and to share their memories. She had a profound effect on politicians from all sides. Some of them had been told off by her, and they remembered that with great affection. Others were inspired by her. There are many, many more women now than there were in her day. Now, the Prime Minister and many former Prime Ministers paid tribute to a strong Yorkshire woman. And Betty Boothroyd was unforgettable, and the corridors here still echo to the sound of her formidable and familiar voice. In a role which goes back centuries, it was Betty Boothroyd from Dewsbury, who in 1992 became the first female speaker in the House of Commons. The Honourable Gentleman will resume his seat immediately. Immediately! Her no-nonsense approach earned respect and at times struck fear into what was back then a room full of mainly men. She'd just given everyone a lecture about these new mobile phones that they were new in those days uh, and don't let them ring while, you know, business in the chamber's going on. So I sat there and five minutes later my phone went off. I was like, oh dear, I'm going to get a terrible drubbing for this. I definitely think she was um, someone that many of us could look up to. During my childhood she was always on the television taking those men to task in the House of Commons and, and always with such great humour and warmth. I look at my years in Parliament and it was people like Betty that led the way of transforming Parliament. When I got into Parliament, it was male-dominated. People in Yorkshire were incredibly proud that a woman born and brought up in Yorkshire went on to become the first woman uh, speaker. And I've had some lovely messages from people in Doncaster today. Betty Boothroyd was the daughter of a textile worker and a weaver in a Yorkshire household which saw hard times. I felt that somehow or other wasn't justice for people like my family, the mean little streets in the West Riding of Yorkshire with the dark satanic mills at the end of them and a father who was unemployed. We needed a better life than that. And she became a tiller girl, dancing in West End chorus lines. When she decided to enter politics, it took her 15 years to win a seat. Well, what have you made the main issues? The main issues have been cost of living, rent and old age pensions. Miss Withroy, do you find being a woman a drawback in politics? No, I don't. Perhaps in some personal respects it's a drawback, but not really. I think that I can cope equally as well as a man would. Eventually, she entered Parliament as only the country's 95th female MP in 1973 as the Labour member for West Bromwich. Order! Order! But it was as the Speaker that she became better known, ruling with a rod of iron. 
I have no alternative but to ask the Honourable Gentleman for Bolsover to withdraw from the House for this day's sitting. To be the first woman speaker was truly a groundbreaking. The current speaker, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, described her as a friend and a trailblazer. The sad part, she was from Yorkshire. <laughs> she was a speaker that we were all in awe of. Uh, quite rightly, a strong Yorkshire woman who came to the house, achieved every goal that she wanted to. She would ring me up with advice, whether I wanted it or not. You know, she used to tell me, by the way, lovey, you're doing a good job, but... And she was always that kind of great character. The flags outside the Houses of Parliament, where Betty Boothroyd made her name and won affection, as well as respect, fly at half-mast. Lovely. That's very nice. In tribute to a woman described as one of a kind. Amazing to see some of those old pictures from our archives and Katie Oscroft reporting on the remarkable life of Betty Boothroyd, whose death at the age of 93 was announced today. And of course, our thoughts are with her family and her very many friends. Now, on to other news. And residents on Keithley Road in Bradford were woken up last night by the sound of two police cars crashing into a row of shops. One man said he thought a bomb had gone off. Well, West Yorkshire police say it wasn't in pursuit of anyone and hasn't referred itself to the police watchdog, but the officers involved were responding to an incident. Well, Adam Fowler is at the scene in Bradford for us now. And, Adam, is there any sign of that road closure there being lifted? Well, no, you can see it's uh, still in place behind me now. And uh, just over there, you can see the scaffolding's gone up. Uh, the reason for the road closure is that the experts here have been working all day to try and make that safe. And because it's not safe, that's why this road closure is in place. And that's been the situation here now for about 15 hours. This happened in the wee small hours and some of it was captured on CCTV. Take a look. Captured on CCTV. The moment two police cars crash into a row of shops on Keefley Road in Bradford at around three this morning. From the sky, the damage is clear to see, with the shop fronts of ideal bathrooms and tiles and a building being renovated by the Jamil Mini Market left in ruins. One neighbour described it as like being woken by a loud bomb. Bit of a blessing that there were nobody in those flats, otherwise there could have been a more uh, death or any worse you know, situation and these shops were closed at night time. Can we imagine if that was a daytime and those shopping, you know, people, the residents, the pedestrian, it could have been a lot more dangerous. West Yorkshire Police say the vehicles were responding to an incident, but they weren't in pursuit of anyone and it wasn't a case of another vehicle failing to stop. The service hasn't referred itself to the Independent Office for Police Conduct. No one was injured and police are describing it as a damage-only collision. The road has been closed in both directions as work is carried out to ensure the buildings are safe. Each ruined shop front, a reminder that it could have been much worse. So there you go, road closure is still in place, although the word on the street here is that it will be reopening fairly soon as that building behind me becomes uh, more secure. Obviously, this must have been very frightening for everyone involved and the next question will be exactly how did all this come about in the first place? OK, Adam, live in Bradford for us, thank you. Now to an ongoing protest about the rules regarding toilet breaks in schools. Several schools in our region have decided to introduce a ban on pupils using toilets during lesson times. Yes, the schools, which include Farnley Academy near Leeds, say locking the loos outside break times helps to tackle truancy. But the pupils say using the toilet is a basic human right. Fraser Maud reports. We want rights! We want rights! The rights these children want relate to toilet access during lesson time. With the police in attendance, parents and pupils at Farnley Academy continued their protest against what the school says is a policy to tackle truancy, locking the toilets during lesson times. It's an issue some parents think the pupils are right to protest about. It's their right to protest. End of the day, the school's not listening. They've had to resort to this because they're not listening. What else are they supposed to do? 
parents, kids are trying to speak to school and they're just not listening. Absolutely have a right to, to have the voices heard. The teachers are striking tomorrow for, for right for better pay and better working conditions. And these children are asking for the same thing, being able to use a, a clean toilet and be able to go to the toilet when they need to go. There have been scenes similar to this in recent days at other schools around the country. Sir John Townsley, who's the chief executive of the Gorse Academies Trust, which runs Farnley Academy, said in a statement it was being directly orchestrated by a handful of parents and included other adults who are not connected to our school community against the backdrop of a national social media trend. He said the protesters' demands were not clear, but added, though we do, when necessary, allow children to use toilets during lesson times, we strongly encourage our pupils to use the toilets before and after school and during break times. It's 12 o'clock now and the majority of the parents and pupils who are protesting have now left the school. They've been told that the children will be marked down as absent today and that the head teacher was not willing to talk to parents. Uh, they asked the police officer to go into the school and see if the head teacher would discuss the situation with them. They were told that he wouldn't, but that a letter will be drafted later on this afternoon. The parents say they look forward to seeing the school's response, but warn that unless the policy is changed, the protests will continue. Fraser Maud, ITV News, Leeds. And despite that cold northeast wind and a few showers today, there has been some sunshine. What's the forecast for the rest of the week? All the detail a little later on. Today has seen the launch of the Sheffield Clean Air Zone, which is aimed at reducing pollution. It comes as health experts estimate more than 250 people die in the city each year because of poor air quality. Polluting commercial vehicles will be charged on a rising scale. Its introduction has been hugely controversial, with those against it claiming it to be a stealth tax and say it will hit some already struggling businesses very hard. Well, we can cross live now to Martin Fisher in the new zone tonight. Martin, how's it gone down there with people? Well, there's been lots of voices in the run-up to its introduction, both for and against this new zone. But the fact of the matter is, it's been introduced today. And if you look behind me, you can probably still see there's plenty of traffic using the roads in that zone tonight. Now, that's something that Sheffield Council wants to see reduced. They want to improve the air quality in this part of the city. And to do that, they're looking at commercially polluting vehicles. So these are lorries and vans that are coming into these streets and they'll now be charged between 10 and 50 pounds. But there's a danger to this, and that danger, say the people who are opposed to the zone, are that you could create a commercial wasteland here in the heart of Sheffield. The signs are up, and from today, Sheffield's new clean air zone comes into force. There's been protests against it, but despite the opposition, polluting vehicles from today will have to pay to come into the city centre. We have between 250 to 500 deaths a year that could be uh, avoided if we make this transition. We don't have clean air. We're exceeding and this is what government and all the health professionals are telling us. Uh, the, the air pollution here in the city centre is very, very poor. The clean air zone covers the inner ring road and city centre. Cameras will monitor the area automatically identifying vehicles that should be charged. It'll be an extra cost for many businesses. One of those is Stephen Thompson, who runs a wholesale meat business based just over the Sheffield boundary in North Derbyshire. If we were the other side of the dual carriageway, we'd get the help straight away. The, the forms are there for us to fill in and get some help with a new van. It's at least £3,000 and probably more help coming as they uh, find they've got greater problems with what's coming ahead in Sheffield. Polluting commercial vehicles entering the zone will be charged £10 a day for vans, rising to £50 a day for lorries. Private vehicles, though, won't be charged. I think the, the way we're going to deal with it is just put a, a one line on every invoice of a pound for kind of Sheffield tax, and that's going to be, it's going to have to be passed on, which is really bad because a lot of the cafes and restaurants are really struggling at the moment. 
The council says that it had to bring in these measures because the government wants areas of poor air quality cleaned up. The income from the cars is that it can only be used to support uh, the scheme itself, so the running of the scheme, um, and also for other clean air projects. The grants that we're able to offer are not going to cover the full cost of upgrading a vehicle, and that's why we'll continue to push with government to get more money. Galetti Ugona, a respiratory consultant at Sheffield Children's Hospital, hopes the zone will help patients. Um, from the evidence that we've seen um, for, for, for other parts of the country that have had clean air zone, um, we would expect that the, the, the levels of pollution would come down around the hospital, so that can only be a positive thing for the patients. So a bid for cleaner air in Sheffield City Centre starts today. For those businesses within it, though, what the future holds is far from clear. Martin Fisher reporting from the new Sheffield Clean Air Zone. Now, the energy regulator has reduced the cap on the amount suppliers can charge their customers. It comes in from April the 1st and reflects the fall in wholesale energy prices. But bills are still expected to increase. In a moment, we'll be hearing from money-saving expert Martin Lewis about what all this means. But first, here's a closer look at today's price cap announcement. The new price cap is £3,280 per year for the average household. That's a fall of almost £1,000 on the current price cap of £4,279. Ofgem says the new rate reflects the recent fall in wholesale energy prices. But bills are still expected to rise as government support becomes less generous. The government has been running two schemes in tandem to help reduce our energy bills. The first, the £400 winter discount, will soon come to an end. The second, the energy price guarantee, which is the government's own cap on energy bills, is rising from £2,500 to £3,000 in April, meaning consumers will have to pay around £500 or 20% more towards their bills. Well, earlier, Kevin Ashford spoke to the money-saving expert Martin Lewis, who says consumers are facing severe pressures from energy costs. We're paying already now double what we were paying last winter. We are currently expecting it to go up by 20% in April. That's a government price rise, not the regulator, not firms, which is why I'm campaigning for that not to happen. Um, and I think people are desperate for any form of energy relief that they can get. Remember, too, in April, that £400 winter help that everybody's been getting, that stops as well. So it's going to get quite tough. Every hint that the direction of travel in energy prices is down is good. You've been advising for some time for people not to fix their energy prices. Is that still the advice? Currently, it's still the advice because there are no fixes available. There are no cheaper, meaningfully cheaper tariffs available. There's no way to fix. I think we are likely to see that to start to change in the next few weeks or maybe a couple of months, that we may see some fixes come in. The real question will be at what price. So once we do know the price of the fix, then we'll be able to analyse whether it looks worth it or not. And one final question. I know it's a question you've been asked a lot. Wholesale prices are going down. The consumer isn't seeing that. Why is that? Well, to be fair, there was a time lag with our prices going up. No one will feel it because as soon as our prices went up, we all thought it was awful. But they actually, they did not go up as quickly as the wholesale rates. So wholesale rates went up and our price followed. Wholesale rates are coming down and there is a time lag for our prices to come down, which is what's happening. That's why when you ask me, in July, are we likely to see prices drop? I can say yes, because I know what the time lag is, and that's what relates to now. So we are a victim of the time lag at the moment. But the really big question is, in April, is the government going to choose to put the nation's prices up by 20%? I think that would be an act, an act of national mental health harm. We do not need another letter telling people that bills are going to be going up by 20%. And that's one of the reasons I wrote to the Chancellor that, and the fact not putting them up would keep inflation lower too. Mm, the views of uh, Martin Lewis there speaking to Kevin Ashford and uh, in response the government says the cost of energy has already been falling and we expect this to drop further over the coming months which we fully expect suppliers to pass on to their customers. OK well it's time for sport now and news of a huge win for Leeds United on Saturday. Zero accounting software. Sponsors ITV Regional Sports Report. 
And it's good evening to Chris. Uh, nice to see you. And you. And you were at Ellen Road on Saturday. What was the atmosphere like there then? Yeah, good evening, guys. Yeah, very tense before and during the game, but then utter relief after the final whistle. It was second bottom against bottom on Saturday. Leeds knew that nothing short of a win would do against Southampton in what was new head coach Javi Gracia's first game in charge. If there were any nerves, it didn't show on the faces of Leeds United's players as they arrived for the biggest game of their season so far. Could new head coach Javi Gracia be that calming influence? He's got a decent proven record at Watford and places like that and abroad, so hopefully we can get a run together and stay up. What about the new manager? Pleased with him? Yeah, I am actually, when I've read about him. And yeah, he did a good job at Watford, so hopefully he can do it here. A bit apprehensive, to be honest. It's a game that we, uh, we need to win. We've got to win. And if I, we feel, don't... I still feel positive though. You've always got to back your team, so 3-1. I think it'll be really fun and I think we're going to win. The confidence of all of us and knowing it's only a step, but for us in this moment it's an important step. How important was it to get three points in the end? It was very important because literally if we didn't, we would definitely get relegated. We're out the relegation yeah. zone, so that's really good. That was fantastic. Three points and out of the relegation zone. That's great. That was amazing. If we hadn't have got that, I think we'd have gone down, I reckon. Yeah, definitely on the up now. Fingers crossed. <laughs> what does it mean to you to have Jack Harrison's shirt? It means the world to me. He's my favourite player ever since Phillips left. So some fans went home with a few cherished mementos. The players drove home with three valuable points. Yeah, that was a huge win for Leeds. You could feel that real tension before the game and a real collective. Just a big sigh of relief after the full-time full whistle. Yeah, massive three points. Massive. The fans seem fairly positive, seems to have given them a bit of, of hope. But which of our... Yeah. Other teams were toasting three points. Yeah, there were a few of them, Lee. So Sheffield United back to winning ways after a couple of defeats in the championship. Just the one goal in this one as well. Ollie McBurney claiming all the adulation, but in truth it went down as a Ryan Porteous own goal. The Blades lead over Middlesbrough in third, back up to seven points. The results haven't been great of late, but particularly the last two performances have been strong. Um, we've seen a lot of them and uh, we also know what dangerous players they've got as well. So... Uh, probably paying them the most respect we could today. We changed slightly how we went after the ball and how we pressed and I thought we got the results of that in the end. Sheffield Wednesday are now three points clear at the top of League One. Fitting that it was long-serving defender Liam Palmer scoring the goal that set a new club record of 20 league games unbeaten. It was a great day for Barnsley fans who saw their team rack up a fourth straight win. This their most impressive, though, over playoff rivals Derby. A week after turning 24, Luke Thomas gifted a late birthday present from former Sheffield Wednesday goalkeeper Joe Wildsmith. And almost 4,000 Bradford City fans made the short journey to Doncaster to see Andy Cook score his 20th goal of the season to settle this Yorkshire Derby. Now then, where are we? Who's going to tell us where we are? Over there. <laughs> so all the cameras are in a different place tonight because we've got Kerry in the studio and Chris as well. Sunniest uh, Feb on record, Kerry? Boom. Hello. There you are, as if by magic. So everything's in a different place. Yeah, it's it, already with two days to go, uh, West Yorkshire has had its sunniest February on record. So that's pretty good in terms of sunshine amounts, but it has been very dry. And it's not been very sunny across the region today. We've had uh, quite a lot of showers moving in off the North Sea. So it's not to do with weather fronts, it's to do with the wind direction bringing moisture in off the North Sea. But some fantastic rainbows. A big thank you to Les Little for this. What's going on then? Well, the jet stream has got a big old kink on it. It's been very... Um, popular this uh, um, February of that um, jet stream having a bit of a buckle in it. So yes, it starts off coming in from the Atlantic where we'd expect our weather this time of the year and low pressure systems, very much like today to live, but it either comes further north or south of the UK. So we've got fairly settled conditions despite those showers moving in off the North Sea. Next week, and I'll talk about this a little bit more over the next few days, it looks like we're going to get a colder northerly to start the week and then there's a big debate about whether we get the colder air staying with us next week or eventually some warmer and wetter 
of stuff comes in from the west and southwest. So I'll have a bit more detail on that. But that's a look ahead to next week. What about last night? Have you heard about the Aurora Borealis? Tell us, <laughs> Kerry. Tell us. <laughs> Everybody's going on about it. There was a significant solar storm last night across the UK. Wow. And this was Carlton in Selby. You can just about make out the sort of green hues despite the cloudier skies. Now, uh, you could see it as far south as Cambridge, but of course it's to do with the actual uh, cloud cover that we've got. And the forecast certainly for tonight is still very, very strong. So between nine o'clock this evening and midnight, if you look northwards, certainly against any light pollution, against uh, those dark skies, you might just see the Aurora Borealis tonight, but will we get the clear skies? Here is your forecast. Good visibility on the horizon. TUI sponsors ITV Yorkshire weather. So today it has been a bit of a mixture, definitely rainbow weather across many parts of the region with a mix of sunshine and showers. Definitely the sunshine in York first thing this morning, a beautiful shot by Gary Hornby, but not the best view for Blossom across the Pennines first thing, a lot of mist and murk. A big thank you to Sandy Nicholson for sharing. So this has been the scene so far today, high pressure to the north, but that northeastly gathering the moisture in off the North Sea, bringing in a lot of cloud inland. One or two brighter breaks, but yes, some showers. And as the winds gather strength tomorrow, I think we'll see a bit more cloud and a few more showers moving a little bit further south and west. So in a bit more detail, overnight tonight, cloud coming and going, still the risk of a shower, still quite breezy, but in shelter under any clear skies, the temperatures will dip to the low single figures of two or three Celsius, not out of the question. So a chilly enough start as we head into Tuesday morning, 6.58 and 5.41 are your sun times for tomorrow. So again tomorrow, disappointingly cloudy for many, but many places will be dry. We will see some breaks and thinning of the cloud at times, and we've got that north to northeasterly. It will become quite strong and gusty, especially out towards the coast. Could be in excess of 25, 30 miles an hour directly along the coastline. That will provide a wind chill into the afternoon, feeling more like three or four, where you don't get any sunny breaks, and especially if you get a shower or two. And those showers will continue at least for a time as we head through into tomorrow evening. For Wednesday, a lot of cloud around, fewer showers. So again, a mixture of sunny spells and showery outbreaks. Drier on Thursday, but a lot of cloud around. Hopefully drier and brighter by the end of the week on Friday, but a fairly chilly northerly breeze. Tui sponsors ITV Yorkshire Weather. And before we go, Carrie, we had a lovely picture there, but if there's any more of those northern lights, we want to see them. Yeah, if you want to brave it, the weather's not ideal. Weather photos at itv.com. Perfect. Thank yeah. you very much. That's it. I'm back after news at 10. Have a lovely evening and we'll see you tomorrow at 6. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.